De zakelijke vraagstelling is dus... We will continue now with the question on the plastic crate and the corrugated board box of lecture 1. Which one is the best choice from a long-term business point of view? Half of the consultants advise us to take that solid board box, since it's made from recycled paper. But the other half advise the plastic crate, since it serves 30 round trips. The question is, which is the best solution in terms of sustainability? We will solve this question first, and after that we will look at some practical issues in LCA that you need to know during the LCA lab you have to do. When you look at the two solutions for transport packaging, you start with the problem definition. In LCA, that is called goal and scope definition. For instance, our goal is to transport tomatoes from the Dutch greenhouse to a retail shop in Frankfurt. And we are interested then in the most efficient and sustainable solution for this specific case. So we have to benchmark both packaging solutions. In the transport chain, we use a lot of systems. We use truck and trailers for road transport, especially the fuel we need for that. And we use forklift trucks, warehouses and the transport packaging. We use energy in warehouses and energy for washing of the crates. And we have the end of life of both packaging systems. We have to benchmark both systems, so we do two LCA calculations in parallel. Let's get started and see that it's quite simple. We start with a specific corrugated board box and a specific plastic crate of the same size. We take existing solutions with the same outside dimensions. You see here that the plastic crate has a smaller inside volume than the corrugated board box. The reason for that is that the plastic crate needs more volume for its walls, for a strong design. The thickness of the walls really matters in such a calculation. Note here that the crate must be robust as it has to survive 30 round trips. Consequently, the weight of the plastic crate is double the weight of the corrugated box, while it contains less liters of tomatoes. And now we have to add the relevant LCA data. There are the IDMAT and IDMAT app Excel files at the website. In these tables, you can see that the carton has eco costs of 17.5 euro cent per kilogram. For plastic, you see 1.3 euro per kilogram. It's obvious that you have to know which type of plastic it is, but much of the polymers have this kind of score. These eco costs per kilogram are to be multiplied by the weight of the crate or box to get the eco costs per unit. What we see now is that the eco costs of a corrugated board box are about 10% of the eco costs of a plastic crate. But the crate will have 30 round trips and the box only one. So for the plastic crate we must divide the score by 30, since we must do the calculation per round trip. Consequently we find a lower score for the crate than for the box per trip. And of course we don't need a calculation per crate and box per round trip, but per liter tomatoes that we transport from the warehouse to the retailer shop. After the conversion from round trip to liter, we see now our final score. The students who voted for the crate seem to win so far, since the corrugated board box has twice the eco costs per liter of tomatoes. However, there's still work to do. Maar we moeten... What we did so far is that we calculated how much tomatoes can be carried by a crate or box. But what we still have to do is bring the tomatoes from the greenhouse to the retail shop. That is the real function of our transport packaging. Here we come to a rather difficult but important issue in LCA. The so-called functional unit. This is a combination of two words. The function that our product system has to fulfill and the unit we express that function for instance per kilogram per liter per piece per megajoule in. In this case our unit is per liter. And the function is not to contain tomatoes, but to transport the tomatoes. So we have to look at the transport function that has to be fulfilled, and all the system components that are required for that transport. Not only the transport function, but the storage, cleaning and end of life as well. Well, 
Let's look now at the transport function first. We can calculate the liters per pallet as well as the liters per truck. We see the result of these calculations here. We can carry a bit more tomatoes in the case of the corrugated board box, which is important for the economic as well as the ecologic efficiency. The green eco cost data come from the Excel files on the website. We have the truck plus trader about 42 cents per kilometer. Those 42 cents are mainly caused by the consumption of diesel, but maintenance, tires, lubrication oil and end of life are included as well. The driver itself costs some eco costs as well, since he or she eats and drinks and has a back office. And you need to add the eco costs of the road as well. Now I must tell you something about the habits of LCA practitioners worldwide. Normally they don't add the eco burden of the road. That is because of a combination of reasons. The first and foremost reason is that the eco costs of the road are very specific for an actual case. Which specific road? What were the eco costs of construction? And among how many users can those eco costs be shared? Such a calculation is very laborious. The second reason is that the influence on the total comparison is in most cases less than 5%, since transport is in most LCAs a minor part. And when something is below 5%, it's formally allowed to keep it out of the calculation when you report that in your final LCA description. In this case, we include it. So we have here 75 euro cent per kilometer for the track plus trailer in total. Now the distance. It is 500 kilometers from the western part of the Netherlands to Frankfurt. But we must drive back to the Netherlands as well. When the trip back is empty, we add the 500 kilometers to the trip, having a total distance of 1000 kilometers and allocate that to our tomatoes. In reality, transport companies try to fill the trip back with another freight. For instance, automotive parts of BMW. So, part of the trip back is paid then by BMW. We do the same with the calculation of the eco costs. When part of the trip back is used by BMW, this part is not allocated to the tomatoes. On average, the trailers back are 30% empty, so that part is not paid by other freight. That 30% is allocated to our tomatoes in the case of corrugated boxes resulting in a total equivalent distance of 650 kilometers. In the case of plastic crates, the empty crates have to be taken back to Holland, so then the tomatoes have the total distance of 1000 kilometers eco costs. So we can calculate the eco costs per trip, as well as the eco costs per liter tomatoes. The funny thing is that the situation is now the other way around. The students who voted for the corrugated box seem to be right, since the eco costs of the transport of tomatoes by corrugated boxes are about half the eco costs of transport of tomatoes by plastic crates. That is interesting. What we have to do is add up both calculations. In this figure, we see the eco costs at the y axis and the price at the x axis. What you see is the total transport chain including storage and including the feeder lines from the greenhouse to the auction. The total picture is the system with crates have higher eco costs than the system with boxes. The reason is that transport as well as storage is more for the crates because of the empty crates. What you also see is that the price for the crate system and the corrugated board box system is the same. So the box system is okay from the point of view of transport costs. Without transport to Frankfurt, the eco costs of both systems are equal, but the price of the crate system is lower. So for short distance, plastic crates are preferred from economic point of view. In this kind of pictures, we see which transport solutions perform the best in what type of markets. There is another interesting solution as well, the plastic foldable crate. Such a system will combine the low transport and storage costs of the boxes with the multiple round trips of the crates. However, in practice the foldable crates are less durable. 
the average service life is about 10 round trips. So the eco costs of these crates are three times as high as the crate we had in our calculation, making it unattractive. Nesting of crates would be another solution. The advantage of nesting is the low transport and storage costs for empty crates, but the disadvantage is the loss of net transport volume of full crates. So this is not for tomatoes, but for heavy products. I explain that in the next sheet. This sheet is to explain the difference between freight with high and low density. I mean products which are heavy or light in terms of kilograms per cubic meter. The data in the blocks are from the IDMED tables. When you fill a trailer or a container you have two situations. The first situation is that you have heavy products. Then the trailer is full at a load of 24 tons. The second situation is that you have a light product. Then the trailer is full at its maximum volume of 75 cubic meters. The maximum load in terms of kilograms is never reached in that case. So you have volume based transport and weight based transport. The break even point of trailers is 320 kilograms per cubic meter. 40 foot containers have 420 kilograms per cubic meter. When you have to transport raw materials, you are nearly always above this break even point. But when you have a light consumer product from China, like this toaster, then you have volume based transport. Do not make the mistake then that you take the ton dot kilometer line of the IDMED tables for this kind of transport. Now a couple of other issues you should be aware of in LCA. First a cradle to cradle issue. I saw that most of you know about the cradle to cradle philosophy since it's a hype in the Netherlands. Most cradle to cradle people and especially people in the business sector of metals are rather enthusiastic about metals. They argue that more than 95% of metals can be recycled like copper and stainless steel. The reason is twofold. Metals are easy to upcycle and metals are rather expensive. So there is a financial incentive to recycle. So metals are nearly 100% recycled and you might conclude then that metals will perform very good in LCA, since the eco costs of recycled metals are quite low in the IDMED tables. But do not forget the following. Metals are kept in use in our society for approximately 20 years on average. It's mainly used in durable equipment. But the consequence is that we recycle now the materials which were produced 20 years ago. When you look at this PowerPoint sheet, you see that the current world production of these metals is much more than 20 years ago. And that is what we recycle now. So we recycle only 40% of the current demand of copper and stainless steel. What we do in LCA is that we look at the materials we use in a new product. The input of our production process instead of the recycling potential in the far future at end of life. In practice, the input of our current production processes is the market mix of virgin metals and recycled metals. In normal cases, you don't even know the origin of the metals, so we take the global average market mix in LCA. In our example, 60% virgin, 40% recycled. Nu is dat maar 40%, omdat ik nu veel en veel meer koper en roest en staal. When you produce in the circular economy and you recycle your own product, you also have to do with the real ratio at the beginning of our production process. When you have a product with market growth, you need an additional flow of market mix metals, additional to your own recycling. Now some issues more about recycling. It's not easy to understand all of it immediately, but you can learn how to deal with recycling in chapter 5 of my LCA guide. I take plastics now. Now we won't look at the consequences of the long use phase, but I will take the plastic of this cup as an example. We make this cup out of oil. We use it and we throw it away. In Western Europe, 
it ends up in a municipal waste incineration system with heat recovery, either by production of electricity or by district heating, or both. Or we might recycle it. When I have clean plastic, without colours and with no contamination of other plastics, I can remelt it. This is called mechanical recycling. When I have less clean plastics, I have to upcycle it via chemical processes. Upcycling is much better for the environment than the virgin production from oil, as can be seen in the IDMAT table. In LCA, there are two approaches. We can take the actual input of virgin and recycled material. But common practice in LCA is that we take virgin material as input and calculate the benefit of recycling as a so-called recycling credit for the part that we recycle. This recycling credit is simply the eco cost of recycled materials minus the eco cost of virgin material. So the recycling credit is a negative eco cost score that underlines the fact that the eco costs of the recycling route are lower than the eco costs of virgin material. The IDMAT tables have these recycling credits. IDMAT tables have also eco costs of recycled materials. This is either or since you have double counting when you take them both in your calculation. I talked about upcycling. We mean with upcycling that the end of life of the recycling process has the same quality as the virgin product. Upcycling is not easy and it requires a lot of energy. And it requires that certain types of plastic are not mixed with the other types of plastic since such a contamination is killing for the quality of the end product. There are sorting processes to separate all kinds of plastic from consumer waste. Pigments are deterioration the quality as well, especially in mechanical recycling with remelting. So recycling has a lot of preconditions. That I can use the pigment, so that I can actually smell it. In politics and in business, downcycling is also regarded as quite positive, since it reduces landfill and it reduces the use of virgin materials as well. In cradle to cradle and in the circular economy, people are less enthusiastic about downcycling, since it's a sort of stay of execution. But it helps. Take the example of paper. We start with trees, make pulp of it, and then paper. It ends up in a book that you read in the use phase. At the end of life, we recycle the books as waste paper. We can make a lot of products from waste paper like corrugated board boxes and other carbon packaging. These boxes can be recycled three times and then the fibers get too short and it goes to the municipal waste incineration with heat recovery. But the positive side of downcycling is that you do something useful before the final end of life. Now the issue of combustion with heat recovery at the end of life. I start in this picture with oil and make plastics out of it. At the end of life, it's waste that can be burned in an electrical power plant. So my system generates electricity. In the previous lecture, I explained that the use of electricity in any process is related to eco costs in LCA. So when we deliver electricity from our system, it's related to negative eco costs in LCA. So a credit. This is simply a consequence of the energy balance of my system. I hope you understand that. A consequence of burning plastics, however, is that there are emissions in the exhaust gases. We must take them into account as well. For instance, carbon dioxide. Burning of plastics generates a lot of carbon dioxide. When we look at the calculations of burning plastics in an electrical power plant, we see that the credit of the electricity is about as high as the debit of the emissions. So, burning of plastics has eco costs of about zero. The details depend on the type of plastics, but it's all about zero. Not very positive. Landfill of plastics have also eco costs, so that is not a good solution either. I have a remark here on the carbon footprint. The carbon footprint system has no penalty on landfill, 
since it's assumed that plastics do not degrade and do not have carbon dioxide emissions. So, in carbon footprint calculations, landfill seems to be a reasonable solution, but in reality, it's not. Most plastics in Europe end up in a municipal waste incineration, and not in a power plant. Combustion in a municipal waste incinerator with production of electricity is worse than in a power plant, since the efficiency of a municipal waste incinerator is about 55% of the efficiency of a power plant. Therefore, it generates only 55% electricity, causing a credit of only 55%. And since the emissions are the same, this solution is not good for the environment. When plastic waste has to be burned, it should be done in a modern electrical power plant with a high efficiency. So all the aforementioned options of combustion and landfill must be rejected. Recycling is by far the best solution. The consequences are depicted at this sheet. Recycling does not require a lot of energy and generates therefore a lot of emissions. But this is less than the emissions from the virgin product route. So recycling of oil-based plastics has a fair credit, better than for combustion in a power plant. So far we dealt with oil-based plastics. For bioplastics we have a totally different picture. We have three end-of-life options, composting, recycling or combustion in a modern power plant. What do you think by instinct? Which is the best solution of the three? Who of you think that recycling is the best idea, then composting and combustion is the worst? Or is composting the best and then combustion and recycling is the worst? or composting, then recycling, and then combustion. Please think a short moment and then I will ask you what the best option is. You can vote for it on your smartphone. Who of you voted for one? Uh, hands please. Okay, that's rather much. And who of you voted for two? That's less hands. And who took line three? Oh, that's good. Who number four? Yes, there are really a lot of people. The winner. Five? Who selected five? Only a few. And six? One hand for six, I believe. The majority had option 4. May I see your hands again to check that number 4 scored the best? Yes, most of you like the idea of composting. That is why I have my next slide. It's about Oat Shoes, the first biodegradable shoes, a startup of one of our students at the Delft University of Technology. Shoes that bloom, since he added a few seeds to the shoe. Brilliant marketing, I should say. Composting scores better than recycling and combustion in marketing. It appeals to the cradle-to-cradle -cradle philosophy, where waste is food. I myself have only one negative feeling about it. The shoes should not compost during the time I wear them. But I like the positive feeling of the blooming plant from the seeds. But let's have a reality check now. When we compost plastics, it falls apart into water and carbon dioxide. Quite useless stuff. This is totally different from composting grass and leaves. Compost of natural waste contains all sorts of nutrients like phosphate, nitrate and other fertilizers. But compost of plastics contains nothing useful. So it does not make sense to compost plastics in the sense that waste is food. And useless carbon dioxide emissions must be avoided anyway. Another critical remark here is that the composting process of degradable plastics starts at 60 degrees Celsius at a relative humidity of 100%. Even in tropical areas, the degradation of these bio-based plastics is extremely slow, 
so it's not allowed to throw it away in nature. So, remember that the composting story is a bit of a farce. I know that some of you still don't believe my story, but please have a serious look at the internet to check the details. And when you've really found something that is contradicting, please send me an email so that we can start an interesting discussion. We might both learn from that. But now we continue with the analysis of the other two end-of-life options, combustion and recycling of bio-based plastics. Let's look first at combustion with heat recovery. We start with the plants. They convert carbon dioxide to cellulose and starch. The cellulose and the starch can be converted to bio-based oil or other chemicals to make bioplastics. After the use phase, we burn the plastics in a power plant to generate electricity. The carbon dioxide that will be emitted in the exhaust of the power plant is the same carbon dioxide that was converted by the plants. So this carbon dioxide is part of a big recycling loop by our nature. The LCA community decided that biogenic carbon dioxide is to be counted as zero in the mass balances, since the storage of carbon dioxide is only temporary. That reduces the complexity of the calculations enormously and reduces the possibilities of manipulation of the calculations. We're not deaf for the argument that part of plastics in landfill might become coal in a few thousand years. But that is speculative and deals only with a minor fraction. The fact that biogenic carbon dioxide is not counted has an interesting effect on combustion with heat recovery. The credit of the production of electricity can be taken into account without having a debit of the corresponding carbon dioxide emissions. Now we compare that with recycling. Recycling requires a lot of energy with corresponding carbon dioxide emissions, depending on the way electricity and heat is generated. Complex calculations. There are bioplastics which can better be recycled, and there are bioplastics which better can be burned with heat recovery. Concluding, recycling and combustion with heat recovery are both good ideas for bioplastics. Composting is not. So that was option 2 and option 6 of the question I asked you. There are only a few of you who got it right. Congratulations! Back to your task in the LCA lab. We ask you to redesign the product that you brought with you from home. What you have to do then is you have to look at the material list in IDMAT to find materials that score better in LCA. But you can also use this so-called ISP chart. Such a chart can be made in CES EDUPAC. What you see is the eco cost of a material on the y-axis versus, for instance, the tensile strength on the x-axis. It's a logarithmic scale. The aim is to select the best strength at the lowest eco cost. What you see is that you must select your materials in the diagonal from the lower left side to the upper right side. You see that bamboo scores good in the low eco cost range, like other wood species. Low alloy steel scores also good in terms of eco cost to strength ratio. When you have to redesign a toaster, you need the steel. And when you redesign a chair, you might consider bamboo. In this way, you have some extra guidance in the selection of materials from the IDMAT tables. I come to conclusions with regard to your LCA lab. Since your group of four students has only 22 hours to make the LCA and to redesign your product, you must do the job as efficiently as possible. You have to take apart a product that you take from home and weigh the components. You must multiply the weight with the eco cost of the IDMAT tables. You must sort out other things as well, like the production processes and the transport. You must make the calculation and find the so-called hotspots for improvements in the redesign. But before you get started with these activities, you have to look at some reading matter, especially on how to deal with recycling in cradle-to-cradle -cradle solutions. When you design for the circular economy, you have to think first before you act. 
The reason is that choices on recycling will affect your design fundamentally. So you have to know how to calculate the recycling solutions in LCA before you start. A lot of time can be saved when you start with LCA right away. Don't do the LCA when your design is ready, but the other way around. What you have to do anyway is download the example Excel file of the coffee machine from the website. You must make the LCA of your product in the same format. In practice, it appears that this format saves time to you and to us, since it gives a good overview on what you have calculated and how you did it. And it shows your hotspots. What also helps to speed up your task is that you download the IDMED Lite LCA app from the App Store or the Google Play Store. Instruction video 1 and 2 of this app appear to be extremely useful in terms of saving time. It saves time when you use the IDMAT app tab of the Excel file on the internet. This list of materials and processes contains more than 95% you need in practice. When you cannot find data, you might find them in the Eco Invent tables or in the case of food, in the Agri Footprint tables. Information about the melting point, the strength and other data can be found in the IDMAT Lite LCA app as well as in CES EduPack. What you have to do anyway is read chapter 2 and chapter 5 of the LCA guide. You need these chapters to define the proper functional unit and to do the calculations on recycling in the circular economy. Again, read it before you start with your redesign, not after. You can find Ashby charts in the book LCA data, which saves time as well. Now, last but not least, some practical issues. I take here the example of a toaster. Students who make an LCA on toasters have commonly the following four frequently asked questions. The first question is related to the chromium plated steel. A common complaint is that chromium plated steel is not in the IDMAT files. That is right. You can find steel per kilogram in the database in the section Materials. And you can find electroplating chrome per square meter in the section Metal Processes. The simple reason for that is that chrome plating is a process like powder coating or painting. The second issue is that when you dismantle such a toaster, you end up with six screws. People ask then, what is the exact material and what's the process you make such a screw? The issue here is that the LCA impact of these six screws is so small that you should not bother at all. You can forget about all the components that have less than 2% eco costs. Since the accuracy of LCA is not better than 30%, it does not make sense to do a lot of work for 2%. Your aim is doing something about your hotspots, about things that matter. I must add here that it's a good habit in LCA that you write in your report what you have excluded in your calculation and what you have included. Transparency of your calculation is important in LCA. This is also important when you decide that you make a calculation only on the differences of two products that you compare. This is called streamlining in LCA. The next issue is that you often do not know the type of plastics that have been applied in old products. In new products you can find the so-called resin information code, which is a triangle with a number in it. You can find more details on the internet. However, plastic parts of old products don't have this code. When you don't have the code, just make an assumption that makes sense with regard to the use, such as the required maximum temperature, the type of application, flexibility, etc. Note that the eco costs of a lot of plastics do not differ much. My last issue is that the toaster has a power cord. You may analyze the materials inside the cord, 
that is to say the amount of copper, plastic and rubber. But it's a bit of a waste of time since the IDMAT tables have also the eco costs of quartz per meter per 100 watt. In other words, spend your time on useful things like thinking about solutions for the circular economy. LCA is not an aim in itself. It's a tool to make the products and services in our society more sustainable. Without LCA, you do not have any guidance in your decisions. God's feel only does not work, as you have experienced today in the question on the end of life of bioplastics. In our quest for sustainability, we need LCA as an indispensable design tool. Good luck with your LCA lab activities.